All right, let's talk a little bit more about the water cycle. First off, we show you a nice big satellite picture of the Earth, and what you'll notice is that you're looking a lot more blue than brown, the blue, of course, being water. About two-thirds of the Earth is water, and fortunately, we get some of that transferring onto the land, so we have uh, plants, and so we can live, so we don't live in a desert. The, sa the clouds that you see on the satellite picture, that's basically just some of that water from our uh, oceans evaporating and kind of floating around in the atmosphere. It does not go out into space, it comes back over the land, and that is accomplished with the water cycle. So here's what we're looking at. The water from any kind of uh, mass of water, whether it's a lake or a river or an ocean, evaporates into clouds, works its way over the land. When it's full, you can think of it kind of like a sponge. When that sponge has all the water it can hold, it's saturated, so the cloud will be saturated. Squeeze that sponge out and we get rain or we get snow, and some of that will be soaked up by the land. Some of it will run right back out into your ocean or your pond or maybe a local lake. So that's just basically how it works. A real good example of this is lake effect snow, as we have the Great Lakes, say Lake Erie here. We get the air blowing across the lake. First we get steam fog, and then some clouds. As those clouds become saturated, next thing you know, we have a little bit of snow out there, and that's just one example of the water cycle. How about this week? Well, a satellite picture will show us a lot of clouds out there, the moisture here coming from the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific, all of that going into a storm system that will transfer, transfer the water in the form of rain, ice, and snow. So basically, anytime you see a storm out there, you're just seeing the water cycle in motion. Back in 19